Number 58. How many kilojoules of heat will be released when exactly one mole of iron, which is Fe, is burned to form Fe2O3 solid at standard state conditions? Okie dokie. All right, so we're talking about heat energy under standard state conditions. So this is a enthalpy. I remember that heat goes with enthalpy because the H in enthalpy links up with the H in heat. And both of these, they are delta H's. So they all have H's in common. Now, in order to do this problem, we always have to write a balanced equation first. Now, if we just read it over, right, we are forming Fe2O3. So this is a formation reaction. So if I'm forming Fe2O3, that means that the Fe2O3 should be on the right side, it should be on the products. Now, when you're forming a compound, the compound always comes from its elements. In this case, we have two different elements. So we have iron and we have oxygen. Work with one um, a little bit at a time. So first, let's just work with iron. It has to come from iron, so I'll write Fe. But then you say to yourself, okay, is Fe one of those elements that I have to remember that's a diatomic? No, Fe is not a diatomic. So it's just going to be Fe, and just know that all free elements, the ones that are by themselves, they're all solids except for mercury, which is a liquid at standard state. So then you go to the next one. The next element is oxygen, so I know that it has to be oxygen, right? And do I say, okay, is oxygen one of those ones that are a diatomic? In this case, yes, it is. So I have to include it as O2. And oxygen... Uh, at standard state is a gas. Now we just have to balance. The key thing here, guys, is that when you're writing a formation reaction, it's just easiest to uh, maybe keep this as one. That would be the standard way of doing it. You don't have to do it. You could just balance from here. You'll still get the same answer at the end. So, for example, maybe, maybe we won't do that. Maybe we will do, I don't know, let's just try to balance this. We've done balancing, you know, for quite some time. So I'm going to put a two in front of here. That means that I have four iron and six total oxygen. So I'll put a three here. Perfect. Okay. So now let's move forward. We have to find a delta H. Now what I did was I went in the back of the textbook there's like an appendix uh, to show all the delta H values for the three different components of this balanced equation. Just know that all delta H values for free elements or diatomics, they're always zero. Delta H values are only going to be for compounds, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down the numbers that correspond with each substance. So for iron, it's zero. For oxygen, it's zero. And for the Fe2O3, I have a negative 824.2. Now, when I start doing this math, I don't really care about the units per se. I just write the numbers because I always know that delta H values standard are always kilojoules per mole. So I'll just tie that in at the end. Now, we need a formula for delta H, right? How do we find a, a delta H for a whole reaction? It's this formula right here. So it may look a little scary, and Rxn we know is reaction, right, guys? If you don't, now you know, right? Rxn, reaction. So if I want to find the delta H for the whole reaction, all I have to do is take the sum. This little thing is just a fancy you know, way of saying sum. So I'm going to sum up all the delta H's on the product side and minus the sum of all the delta H's on the reactant side. Now, let's just figure out what those numbers are. Let me just maybe drop this down a little bit. So, right now, we have the numbers. The next step is we want to kind of group all of this into one number on the reactant side and one number on the product side. But in order to do that, you have to multiply each number by the coefficients that you have. So in this case, I'm going to multiply this one by 4 right? Because there's four FEs. Technically, I'm going to multiply this by three. And this one, 
I'm going to multiply by 2. Now, since I have both of these, they're literally being added together. So I just need to add them together to get the final number on the left side. And this I just need to multiply by 2. So this is all going to be 0. So my final answer for my reactant side is 0. And then whatever 824.2 times 2 is, I get a negative 1648.2. And now I'm ready to figure out my answer. So the delta H for the reaction would be the sum of the products, which is negative 1648.4 minus 0. Right? Anything minus 0 is just itself. So I'm just going to subtract this. Right? And I'm just going to say that this is now kilojoules per mole. Now this is the standard, OK? But this is not the answer. We just have to do a little bit more work. Now, we want to find out how many kilojoules of heat will be released when we have one mole of iron, right? So that's our standard number that we have. We have to somehow convert one mole of iron into kilojoules. That's why we found this out, because this conversion factor, that's basically what this is, has the link between kilojoules kilojoules, and mole, mole. So start with what you're given. So I want to find out how much kilojoules would be in one mole of Fe. Times by a ratio. Throw the moles of Fe on the bottom, because we don't want that, and put the kilojoules up on the top. That's why we found out this, this reaction, right? It's negative 1648. 0.4 kilojoules, and now we have to be careful, guys. This is the tricky, tricky, tricky part. I'm not just going to put one mole here. This number is the coefficient number that we had from our balanced equation. I'm looking at Fe, and I noticed that there was four Fe's, so I'm going to put a 4 here. Now I'm going to cancel out the moles of iron. So just be careful. Even though it's kilojoules per mole, this is not specific. This is just a general. So you might be dividing by 4. You might be putting it over 3 or by 2, depending on you know who you have in the beginning. So now all i got to do is just take the 1648, uh, yeah, and then divide by 4. So I get 4112. Negative 4112. Point, nope, yeah, 4112, what? 418, that's okay. Kilojoules. Now remember, guys, there's no such thing as a negative. This just means that the energy was released, okay? So when they're asking it specifically like this, when they say how many kilojoules will be released, you don't say negative 412. That would tell your teacher that there's negative amounts of energy. So you can just say that there's 412.1 kilojoules released. The idea here is to not include the negative. The negative just means that it was released. All right? So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. That would really help us out a lot. And I... So appreciate that, and I appreciate you, all right? I really hope you're doing well. Good luck on your tests and quizzes, and I'll see you all in future lessons. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.